Hello everyone. Thanks for joining us this morning for our Good Friday service. Uh, this morning we're going to gather and reflect and remember the death of our Lord Jesus. Uh, to pause and ponder again how it is that God with us, Emmanuel, would take this journey, endure this death, and to simply wonder at the reason that is the, his love for each one of us. So in a few moments, Jane and I will be walking through some readings taken from the Gospels of Luke and John as they give accounts of Christ's death. And in those words, we will take time to pause, reflect for a moment and pray, and then we'll share communion together. But first, we're going to get to sing this morning. I'm really grateful to Tom, who's prepared this time of worship for us.
we sing all that you've done for us. Jesus, thank you, thank you for the cross. Thank you for the blood you shed for our sins. Conquers the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave.
Lord Jesus, assist us by your spirit as we now reflect again on the last words spoken from the cross. Fill them with fresh meaning for each one of us here. Help us to hear them with understanding, to receive them and respond to them with faith, that we might grasp something more of the breadth and length and the heights and depth of your love, which surpass knowledge. We ask this for your sake. The Apostle Luke writes in chapter 23, verse 33 of his Gospel. When they came to the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, the other on his left. Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they divided up his clothes by casting lots. It was your love, Lord. Your love for us that enabled you to be nailed to the cross. It was your love, Lord, that held you there. When you might have called for legions of angels, it was your love that pleaded for your murderers. It was your love that prayed, Father, forgive them. Again, in Luke's Gospel, we read, chapter 23, verse 35. The people stood watching, and the rulers even sneered at him. They said, he saved others, let him save himself, if he is God's Messiah, the Chosen One. The soldiers also came up and mocked him. They offered him wine vinegar and said, if you are the King of the Jews, save yourself. There was a written notice above him which read, This is the King of the Jews. One of the criminals who hung there hurled insults at him. Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other criminal rebuked him. Don't you fear God, he said. Since you are under the same sentence, we are punished just justly for we are getting what our deeds deserve. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus answered him, truly, I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus, you promised paradise to a thief. In your death, you opened up the kingdom of heaven to all who believe in you. Father, we worship you today for the hope that you brought to our lives. And Father, we wonder again today at the promise of eternal life. John 19 verse 26 When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved 
standing nearby. He said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. Lord, as we stand at the cross, like Mary, and hear your words, still caring, still preferring, even in agony, we ask you to work in us your desire. That as humble members of your family, we may care deeply for one another and unselfishly commend your love in our words and our deeds. The Apostle Mark recounts in his Gospel, chapter 15, verse 34. At three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Out of the darkness of Calvary, Lord, we hear your lonely cry of dereliction. And we bow our heads, acknowledging our guilt, you bore our sin in your body on the cross. You were made a curse for us, and you tasted death for every man. John 19 verse 28 Later, knowing that everything had now been finished and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stick and lifted it up to Jesus' lips. Lord Jesus, who endured in your body the agony of thirst and death, and in your spirit thirsted for the world's salvation. Deepen our understandings of your suffering, by which our redemption was secured. John 19, verse 30. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Lord Jesus, at the end, at the very end, you claimed all to be finished, accomplished and your agony was transformed into something new. Your defeat gave way to a new kind of victory, such as the world had only glimpsed before, where the power of God was made known in absolute weakness. And so we pray.
Luke 23 verse 44. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. For the sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Jesus called out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. Father God, in your last word from the cross, your son, our saviour, committed his spirit into your hands. In doing so, he enabled us to do the same today to commit ourselves into your hands. We know that in your hands alone, we are secure, that there is no place like the arms of the Father. And so receive us today, Lord, into your hands we commit ourselves, our souls and bodies, in life and in death, for time, and eternity. Amen. Lord, we rest in your love today, extended generation to generation, that led you to sacrifice yourself for us all. We thank you, Lord, for the covenant made by you to us through this sacrifice for the promise that you will never leave us or forsake us. We thank you, Lord, that in your death, we find that we might have life and life to the full, forgiveness of our sins and cleansing of our souls and the peace that comes from knowing the eternal God as our Lord and as our Saviour. So today we gladly we eat and drink the meal you gave us in remembrance, in wonder, and with much gratitude. Amen. Oh, 
light of the world by darkness slain in the steep fall in glorious day up from the grave he rose again and as he stands in victory sits cast as lost his grip on Let us pray. Father, we thank you for Jesus this morning, that on the first Good Friday, the temple veil was torn in two, from the top to the bottom. And so we thank you that through Christ's passion and his full and perfect sacrifice for sin, the way to your presence is now open to us and all men and women. Accept our thanksgiving and teach us to draw near with a true heart and in full assurance of faith as we tread the new and living way through him who is our great high priest, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 